I'd like to introduce you to Pierre, the patriarch of this urban homestead. Well, Pierre, let's go and take a look at this vegetable garden you got over here. Uh, but before we go any farther, I just wanted to point out this beautiful grape arbor that you've planted. It's, what, about 10 years old? Yes. And it's a purple grape, correct? Correct. Let's go check out your raised beds here. Now these you put in yourself, these have been in for how long? Those bed we started two years ago. And this was an RV park? And it used to be an RV park with tons of rocks, tons of rocks. Well, this is a great way to use it uh, instead of being an RV park. Now, I know to get as much compost as you need to amend these beds, you've got to make a lot yourself. How many bins do you have back behind the garage? Uh, six or seven. I kind of forgot the exact <laughs> number. But some... And does that, does that make enough for you? No, you still buy some compost. But when all things get rolling and we should have enough compost, and we kind of gather the leaves around here. Okay. And, and you use a lot of straw, I see, for mulch, and that holds the moisture in. Uh, but you told me your straw runs double duty. I mean, you, ha it gets, you get two or three uses out of it. Yes, we use them for the, with the chicken. We use them for uh, the path and mulching. And the chicken are getting the first peak because they get all those uh, seeds out of it. They like to go through and just tear it up and find the seeds. You just put the pile in there and you just go digging. And then once they're done with it, you bring it out here to use as mulch and maybe a little fertilizer mixed with it, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually it ends up where? When it's all broken down and it either ends up in the bed during the winter, so we uh -huh. kind of let it compost in there or we put it in a compost pile. So it all gets reused and recycled. Totally reused. There's all right. There's nothing, nothing wasted in this yard. And then off to the side here, you've got this nice little cold frame going on uh, and then there's little baby tomatoes planted in there. So you get a nice early start using that cold frame. Yes. So if the nights get cold, we just close up everything. And if it gets really cold, we just put some light bulbs in there. Oh, heat up. okay. Some light bulbs and that gives you enough heat to keep it from freezing inside. Yeah, That's it, a great tip. Now, this isn't the only part of your yard that has been transformed in your urban homesteading. Uh, work here. You've got a new vegetable garden over there and I'm really intrigued by your custom engineered cold frames that you've got there. Yes, it's a piece. <laughs> Everybody talks about those. We'll have to go take a look at those and you can explain them to us, all right? Okay. Let's go. Let's do that. So Pierre, here we are in your newest addition to your garden. This is about a little over a year in, in process. Yep. And uh, we've got several raised beds here going on, but I was really my eye was really caught by this little plant protection structure mechanism that you put together with recycled product. Can you come down here and explain these to me? Yeah, so we, we have the, these pieces are actually the screens, the old screens from the window we replaced uh, 15 years ago when we bought the house. And under it, you'll, we planted stuff that, that will not take the, uh, the birds attack uh, of all kinds. Oh, so I can see leaks. There There's leaves. some of the labels there, yeah, and, and we they're, have... they're just barely coming up. So yeah, they'd be kind of vulnerable to birds. Yes, and then on the on the other side we have uh, the seeds that we planted for for onions, I believe. Okay. Little onions, and, and then this is for what? It's an old fence. Again, yeah. it came from the yard. It keeps the the creatures from go, trying to push the the screens away, holds and the everything wind. down, yeah. and the wind, and it doesn't. It's easier to use than actually uh, bricks. Well, that, that's pretty clever to reuse those things in the garden. Now, I understand that in your family of four during the summer, you can cut your grocery bill by about half with the produce that you get out of your gardens. Yes. That's, that's pretty impressive. I do know that you know more about these uh, cold frames here because you built them. Yes. Sir. And I'd like to go over there and take a look at them and, and talk about cold frames and how they can be used in our climate to extend the season by what on either end? A month either way. A month either way? Yeah. That's it, significant. It, it really depends. If you got a, a freeze of like zero degree, I mean, if it's zero Fahrenheit, the cold frame is not going to really help you. Right. But if you get 25, 30 degrees, which would freeze the tomatoes, for example, yeah. that works pretty well. Okay. Let's go take a look here. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Cold frames that you constructed yourself. And obviously, they, they open. So, and when this is for venting, correct? It's for venting because in the, in the, at night you want to close them when it's cold, and, but in the, during the day, this will cook up like an oven. It's like a solar oven. So oh, you, sure. yeah. So you really want to, to open it in the morning. Well, this is pretty cool. And you can start some really early things. I see what broccoli in here, which likes the cool weather. So the cool nights aren't going to bother it, but the extra warmth during the day would really help it speed up its growth That's right. and, get, and get going. The thing that really interests me is over in another part of the yard where you've put in 
an orchard, That's but correct. not just any kind of orchard. This is a very unique orchard, and I think we need to go and address that right now. Uh, and you'll give us the correct pronunciation when we get there? Correct. Okay, let's go. <laughs> So Pierre, here we are in your new orchard, which is a very unique orchard. Lots of posts, lots of wires strung. And here in America, we call this espalier. But in France, where you're from? It's espalier. Espalier. Yeah. That sounds much better. <laughs> You've got about 13 fruit trees planted in this small area. Yes. Now I noticed you've got two levels up right now. Yeah. And, and then holes for two more levels. So eventually you'll have is it about a year of growth per level? So yeah. in about two more years you'll have the top level in? Yes, for this, for this back row. But one thing I wanted to point out to everybody here is what you did to these trees, yep. which must have been painful when you first did it, um, is, is you, the first year you put these in, you cut it off at the first wire level. Yes. And, and more than likely this tree had a stem and it had branches. It, and was, it was a cute little thing. It was beautiful. It was like the perfect tree and it's really painful, but you have to do it. This why is the why do you have to do that? It's the idea of the espalier. If I, if I was cutting the, the, the first year, if I was cutting here, it would only make branches at the top. And you want branches to start down here. And I want my first branch to be here because otherwise there would be a lot of wasted space. So by clipping it here, you're forcing new growth right at the level you want it. Yes. You can keep two branches for your sides and you can train one branch up to your next level where you've topped it again. And you'll do that each year until you get your four levels. Yeah, and then uh, on, those, brilliant. on the on the horizontally, you kind of trim it a, a third. I think you take a third off and it'll just start growing a little more every year. And the spur are going to grow sideways on the, the fruiting branches. spurs. Yeah, yeah, they'll make them nice and bushy. Now, the last <laughs> thing I wanted to point out is you put this cute little uh, piece of hose there, uh, and that is to protect the tree yes. from the wire. So, from my from my experience in France, we actually had the trees growing around the wire, and it became the total part of the. Of the oh, tree. It just enveloped the wire. So, just by putting a little spacer like this, that will uh, keep the wire away away from the trunk, and they'll never get in. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for including us in your urban homestead back here. It's been fascinating. I've really enjoyed it. I believe MJ is going to be uh, checking out your chickens here in just a little bit. But thank you so much. You're welcome. It was great to do this. Thank you.